Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Between Plays. So, uh, as we stated here, if we have new information, we're going to talk about it. So, there's a couple of new, well, can't really say fairly new, but maybe things that some people didn't know about that we're going to be putting out there uh, on CloudMD and some upcoming events. Let's start with a little bit of the past here. Um, in case for those that didn't know that uh, CloudMD had created a, a chairman's expert advisory board to guide global growth initiatives. Uh, again, um, this is in line with Dr. Hamza, um, world-class thought leaders in healthcare technology, M&A and academia bring expert knowledge of government strategy, growth and value creation. Um, I actually had previously made a, a video on it. I had to restart it because it just was so long because I was going through it like just reading the whole article basically out of CloudMD because uh, this comes out of CloudMD and um, off of CDAR, all right? And um, basically, we'll just try to break it down a bit. So the newly appointed members, uh, well, the advisory board will play a crucial role in providing leading industry advice across healthcare and data privacy, building and scaling businesses and setting the framework for transformational M&A activity. Um, and it is, uh, so let's look at this here. It pleased to announce that it has appointed experienced industry leaders to its newly formed chairman's advisory board, all with records of building successful high growth organizations, uh, with an international outlook. So again, everything on global expansion. All right. Uh, we know that they've, um, They've been in the uh, U.S. markets uh, pre-IPO. Um, after IPO, they continue to expand in the U.S. markets. They're expanding across Canada. They have an excellent, easy-to-use app. Um, and a lot of the companies that they acquire uh, just want a lot of shares of CloudMD, which, um, which is positive. So some of the newly appointed members, all right, uh, to the chairman's advisory board include Dr. Ann Snowden. Um, now we're looking at a person here, uh, professor of strategy entrepreneurship, academic chair of World Health Innovative Network, scientific director, CEO of supply chain. Look, Scan Health uh, engages over, like this person has uh, a lot of, um, just a lot of experience uh, just in business itself, in the world of um, health. Uh, and let's just look at some of, so Dr. Stone holds a PhD in nursing from the University of Michigan, MSc from McGill University. So we're looking at a person that's in the States, in Canada, uh, BSN of Western University, Fulbright Scholar, Fellow Academ uh, American Ac Academy of Nurses, um, and in addition, Dr. Stone is a leading, listen to this, is leading a national, a national, all right, COVID operating grant funded by the Canadian Institutes for Health Research that supports activity of research teams across seven Canadian provinces. So this research program examines the impact of supply chain infrastructure and processes on the COVID-19 outcomes in Canada. So... This person is on CloudMD's newly created advisory board. That's just, at, just that person alone for me is like a no brainer. All right, so let's keep on going. So Art Mesher, this is another person, is a recognized as a pioneer in building and investing in world leading companies. World leading companies, all right, that harness the integration of business communities or networks such as we now see in the healthcare industry. Uh, so, Art is considered the founder of federating network models for supply chain industry, launched the integrated logistics strategy services offering Gartner Groups. It, look, he's on so many advisory boards and chairman, and it's uh, Di Dunham, uh, Chancellor Clean SL8. Uh, uh, New Nulogy Corp or Real Matters. Uh, he's taken uh, Veris Bay Corporation, sold to Great Hills Park for 126 million. Seared Corporation sold to Federal Signal. Vice Chairman, Executive Director of Livingston International, sold to Platinum Equity. Served on the board of QHR, sold to Loblaws for 170 million. Strategic Advisor for Scale AI. 
Canadian Supercluster in Initiative for AI-Driven Intelligence Supply Chains located in Montreal. Um, until 2000, late 2013, Art was CEO and Chairman and Board Director of the Descartes System Group, which is uh, DSGX, right? If you look for that on, um, on the stock market. Uh, appointed CEO in 2004, spirited the company turnaround into awarding winning worldwide profitable operations and stellar financial performance and created significant shareholder value along the way. Company is currently valued at $5.9 billion with a B. Among his other achievements, selected as Council of Supply Chain Management, Distinguished Service Award recipient in 2008, and was elected to the Supply Chain Hall of Fame. Now we move on to Don Simmons, experienced executive leader, serial entrepreneur, currently serving as Chairman and CEO of Blythe Group, Family Office and Incubator, participating in more than 30 startups. Down. Don was founding partner in Lenberg Group in 77, best known for creating ClearNet, one of Canada's three major wireless networks, and sold to TELUS for reportedly $6.6 billion in the year 2000. I mean, what is that today? All right, $6.6 billion in the year 2000? That, those are not like everyday acquisitions back then when you're talking billions like that. So very important. Uh, 20 years later, 6.6 .6 billion is a lot 28, that 20 years later. So just imagine. Anyways, Don was also founder of CEO and Errol Q Inc., one of the first Canadian companies to combine GPS satellite and wireless technologies. That's amazing. During his tenure, he was named one of the Canada's fastest growing technology companies. In 2005, he was named a finalist in the Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year Awards, a member of the Canadian Telecommunications Hall of Fame, and a Queen's Jubilee Medal recipient. Don is also a former CEO of <clears throat> CTS Television. So, not just no one, right? Um, very well known, very respected individual, Ernst & Young. Uh, Canadian Telecommunication Hall of Fame. Uh, he's also a known avid supporter of innovation, acquisition-based growth strategies, and combining new technology to deliver impactful results for customers. Recently applied his considerable talents to the healthcare technology industry, having founded and invested in businesses that focus on delivery data assessments, ass assessments and personal health information, and to families in a circle of care. He also currently as the Chancellor of Crandall University in Moncton, New Brunswick, and Director of Balin Technologies, which trades on the TSX. Balin Technologies. I think another important act, like person added to the advisory board, Frank Arnon here, as a senior partner in the Business Law Group, a co-chair of the private equity group of Castles, Brock, and Blockwell, LLP. Over 30 years experience practicing corporate and securities law, focused on M&A for clients. Frank also acted um, for clients in fintech, telecom, software, SaaS, consumer product industries, right? He's also been a uh, uh, public and private company. Frank has acted on numerous IPOs for both issuers and underwriters and advised on a wide variety of debt and equity financing. He also was represented some of Canada's largest pension funds and international and domestic private equity sponsors. Frank has a Bachelor's of Commerce degree in Queen's University, Bachelor of Laws degree from University of Western Ontario, Master's of Law from Osgoode Hall of York University, also served as Director and Chairman of the Governance Committee of an Ontario hospital for five years. Once again, a person that, you know, moves around, goes around, also well-respected, well-known. Then you have here, um, Parish Raj Doshi is a seasoned executive with experience in marketing, product management, service sales, finance, e-business, and operations. Combined with experience in change management, business development, and strategy in the highly competitive direct-to-consumer markets. He currently owns, operates a strategy and advisory consultancy, Connect IQ, which focuses um, on helping organizations with customer-focused business strategy and operational service. His 35 years experience uh, includes senior roles at Rogers Communications, Inc., one of the largest publicly traded companies in Canada, where he was the Executive Vice President of Consumer Wireless and Executive Vice President of the 5G program. Raj has also served on board and advisory boards of several industry leaders and technology-oriented companies in Canada and the USA, and currently serves on the board of a smart energy startup focused on solutions for the 5G future. Raj has Masters of Accounting, BA from the University of Waterloo, and is chartered professional accountant. So he has a CPA, CA, CMA. 
Raj also obtained his ICD, Institute of Corporate Directors, designation 2019. Dr. Hamza uh, has commented as saying, CEO of CloudMD, we are very pleased to welcome this group of exceptional industry leaders to assist us as we continue to navigate through our growth trajectories, including strategic m and activities, entering important segments in the future of telemedicine like 5G, wearables, etc., and increasing access to care of our patients. We feel confident that this is and will continue to be an explosive growth period for CloudMD and having the expertise and knowledge from our chairman's advisory board will be invaluable to help solidify our success in capitalizing on growth opportunities. This strategic board will help create a stronger foundation on which we continue to adapt to the rapid transformations in the healthcare space. So he, he says, I look forward to working with everybody, including Mark Kohler to continue executing on more growth initiatives while dil diligently focusing on delivering exceptional holistic healthcare to our network. Mark Kohler, ch chairman of CloudMDCon, I'm very pleased that commented stating, I am very pleased that we have been able to attract such an illustrious group of industry veterans to assist CloudMD as we continue to create value for our shareholders now. And as this accomplished group has done in the past for other successful organizations. I am especially grateful to the members, most of whom I have worked with in the past for the commitment to me and CloudMD to advance the delivery of healthcare and the massive positive impact that we continue to make with our technologies and the delivery of positive outcomes to patients. Now, that being said, what we also have here is um, <clears throat> something from Streetwise Reports. So just to let you know that from uh, CloudMD, the, the uh, whole uh, Chairman's Expert Advisory Board and everything, this is from an article September 16th, all right? <clears throat> this is like 15 days ago, basically, just rounding it out. This is fairly new. It is new, it's baby, it's, it's a, you know, how many times did these people meet? They probably did a Zoom video, all right? Just say hello to each other, all right, let's get on this, let's get on board and let's see where we can go. Let's hear what Dr. Hamza's growth strategies, which they probably already heard before creating this advisory, right? But, I mean, give them at least six months to a year to like, you know, to, 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 to see results of this advisory board. I mean, uh, you know, we, we live in an, uh, you know, where everything has to be right now, right now, right now, right now. But the way Dr. Hams is building his business is footprints on the ground. So he wants foundation and he wants to grow solid. So solid. This board... Every single person here is like a massive piece of the growth puzzle with huge connections across probably the world and certainly different industries. I mean, like when you work for an industry for 40 years, you get to know people. And then all of a sudden you're like, listen, there's this little company coming up. I think you should look at them. Anyways, that's usually the way the world works. So let's move on to something else. Cloud MD. So this is from a report, right? Uh, this is from Streetwise Reports. Um, and I thought that it was pretty inter interesting. And it says, Cloud MD, the best bet in telehealth? Question mark. COVID-19 has uh, a vaulted telehealth met telemedicine into the big league. Since month, six months into this global pandemic, an expert now contend industry is years ahead of where it would have been. Yet, by any measure, telehealth is still in its infancy. Make no mistake, this will become a multi-trillion dollar industry. Which is what everyone's saying now. Motley Fool. Everyone's saying this now. Trillion dollar industry. <clears throat> So regulators and insurance companies were forced to rapidly understand and support telesessions in March, April, and they did. There's no turning back to the way healthcare used to be administered. This works, as I said before in the past, for everyone. Patients, I have children, uh, a wife, um, and we're using telemedicine for everything. All right, telehealth, like it's just, this is the way it goes. Never going back to sitting down, like the logistics of getting things prepared, for your kids and whatever, just to go see a, a, a doctor for like one minute of, that's not true, let's not exaggerate, five minutes, 10 minutes maybe at most, and then, you know, out of the room, but we waited 
four hours to go see that one doctor. Ain't happening. Forget about it. It's done. And let's not talk, forget about talking about everyone else that's more sick than you are in that room, uh, spraying germs all around, trying to get your kids to sit down. It's just not happening. It's not happening anymore. No, wait. Forget about it. It's not happening. I'd rather click on an app and just go, appointment, here we go, here we go. My kid doesn't have to miss school because he's not even that sick. I just have a few questions or whatever, whoever, and whatever, and sit down and have a nice coffee and then wait for the call. Hey, Doc, how you doing? Oh, great. Okay, yeah, thanks. Okay, so it's going to my, uh, okay, my, pres my prescription is going to be at the pharmacy right around the corner here. When, okay, when, about when? Oh, I'll be there in like uh, 10 minutes. You just have to write it out. All right. Yeah, okay, so I'll see you next time, Doc. Okay, click. That's it. It's over. Done. Okay, so. It, this is, it just makes sense. And doctors love it too. And <clears throat> and uh, like naturally, when I say doctors, I'm not saying every single doctor on the planet. I'm saying like in general, um, they don't have to be around, uh, you know, multitude of sick people when they can just do it this way. Um, and they don't have to see a person that had a UTI that waited five hours for, to go see them. That's really upset when the doctor could have been like, you just needed a prescription for a UTI. I'm so sorry. I mean, I've been seeing you for the last 15 years. Like didn't know you were waiting outside for five hours for that. I could have just, I could have just written you one up. It takes 10 seconds. You know, you, you have recurring UTIs. <clears throat> There's some people that have recurring things. They're more sensitive to certain things. Uh, UTIs is a great example for bladder infections, you know? And uh, sometimes people just need a prescription real quick to get it and then boop, boop, it's gone. Why have to wait five hours? Like, anyways. And how about for the healthcare uh, industry? How much money are they gonna save? Anyways. So let's go back to this article. Um, well, he states the same thing here as I am stating, going to the doctor is a hassle, unwelcome expense, 40, you know, so 45 minute appointment, he's saying 45 minute appointment, you know, could turn into, you know, hours of annoyance, not, okay, also not mentioning the risk of contracting or transmitting a serious disease, virus or flu, which is what we're saying. In telesessions, patients can avoid missing work or school, they save time and money, not having to drag a chill child to a doctor's office. He says it's priceless. I agree. And anyone who has a child that use this type of service, and then you could have a Fitbit on your wrist that can give you, like give them all of the um, information on your oxygen levels, your heart, your pulse. Like, and they talked about having stuff where they can actually see into your ears and stuff like that. Like, let's, anyways, they have like AI bots and they got a whole bunch of stuff. CloudMD is pretty advanced. So anyway, here it says that he's, gonna, he's focusing on CloudMD here. So, um, so he's saying that since when he wrote an article on them in July that CloudMD's um, shares have soared. I remember seeing CloudMD when they were like 61 cents or 31 cents, something like that. Um, in which I point out was trading very cheap compared to their peers in large part due to an overhang of private placements becoming free trade. Following the SaaS business model, CloudMD has the potential to be stable, uh, rapidly growing company with long lasting recurring revenue. Management is prudently pursuing a hybrid approach to healthcare delivery in Canada and increasing US. So he's stating the same thing, prudently, footprints on the ground, solid foundation, excellent. Um, in addition to telehealth, the team continues to acquire, own, optimize, and operate conventional healthcare clinics. I believe this approach encapsulates the most efficient and cost-effective way to gain market share. CloudMD has about 30 million in cash, some of which is earmarked for announced acquisitions and is overflowing with new deals to consider. Um, Let's go over here. So now, I mean, we're looking at some, he, he's got some, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the link the, in the description so you can see, he's comparing it to uh, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, uh, 11 different companies. And he's talking about revenue growth, all right? I mean, these other ones are talking about 
20% revenue growth, 37%, 56%, 43, 35, 30. Um, some of them are really pretty, not that, not that good at all. There's 56% for some 27. The average of all those combined is 32%. Revenue growth predicted for cloud MD is 152%. So, um, that's pretty significant right there. Um, let's, let's look here. Let's see here. So Blockbuster revenue growth makes CloudMD a standout, yet it's trading at an EV 2021 revenue multiple that's below that of the slower growth peers. The three lowest growth names have an average growth rate of 17% versus CloudMD at 152. And um, what else we got here? It says investors can play it safe in the conclusion. All right, uh, by investing in uh, companies like uh, Teldoc, Amwell, Viv, or reach for higher returns with commensurately higher risk. I, can, I can't predict the future, but if the telehealth majors were to rise by 50% in the next year, I think a company like CloudMD could possibly rise by a lot more. So a lot of positives. And one of the last things that I think that everybody should be um, aware of, CloudMD is presenting at LD Micro Virtual Investor Day on October 6th, 2020. October 6th. Vancouver, BC, October 2nd, 2020. CloudMD Software, okay. Telson Company, all right. So basically, Siki uh presenting so healthcare to patient is pleased to announce that the company will be presenting at the LD Virtual Investor Day on October 6th, 2020. So look for that uh, for October 6th. And um, that's, it'll be interesting. We'll be learning new things. And basically, Dr. Hamza will be presenting the company, including a questions and answers session, virtually at 8 a.m., Pacific time and 11 a.m. Eastern time. Okay. Uh, the company will also be participating in one on one investor meetings. Um, investors and other individuals may access the virtual presentation by registering here. It's on the Cloud MD website. You can go into the news part, which is Cloud MD presenting, or an investor part. Um, and that's basically it, everybody. Look. All excellent stuff. And I'm very excited by the adv advisory board because a lot of these articles that were written were before the advisory board. And with an advisory board like I'm seeing right there, I'm, um, I'm stoked. I'm, I'm very excited. Very excited for the future of this company. Before, I was very excited just the fact that there was Dr. Hamza that was leading the way. But uh, now you have Dr. Hamza, Mark Kohler, and then you have, uh, you know, the uh, other people that were added to the group, um, uh, for the, in, uh, the insurance companies. And um, now you have this advisory board. It's, it's all exciting stuff. So look, um, we will be doing other videos on uh, the next one, I believe is Green Power. I've been working on that for the last few days. Uh, Green Power Mortar uh, Company. And uh, please, guys, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and uh, do your research, invest wisely. We appreciate all the comments. Please keep on commenting and uh, stay strong. Please don't forget to hit like and subscribe. All right. Have a great day.